Hello dear students. Today we will discuss about the development of management thought. According to Mary Parker Follett, management is getting things done through others and there are so many other renowned personalities who gave their own definitions for this term. Their contribution and the evolution of management thought may be divided into three categories that is classical approach, neoclassical approach and modern approach. In this video lecture, we will cover the classical approach. Under classical approach, firstly we will study the bureaucratic approach which was given by Max Weber and in this he has described the authority responsibility relationship. Unka point of view tha ki jitna authority responsibility relationship clear or strong hoga operations utre hi smoothly perform honge or ye sub up to an extent will depend on the charismatic personality of the leader. Now, features of bureaucratic approach are clear hierarchy of authority, division of work, clear divorce between personal and official matters, system of rules and regulations, and competence-based or merit-based promotions. Now comes the evaluation of bureaucratic approach. Isme hum ye study karenge ki is approach se hume kya benefits huye aur isme kaha pe kuch loopholes reh gaye. To sabse pehle iske benefits discuss karte hain ki jab एक लीडर अपने अथॉरिटी और रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी रिलेशनशिप से अपने जो सबॉर्डिनेट्स हैं उनको सेटिस्फाई रखता है उनको प्रॉपरली एंगेज करके रखता है तो देयर इज कंसिस्टेंसी इन द ऑपरेशंस अलोंग विद नो डुप्लीकेसी ऑफ वर्क एंड देयर इज क्लैरिटी इन प्रमोशन प्रोसेस as it is on the merit basis and there is specialization in the operations. Now, what are the disadvantages? Let's see. There is one leader, so all have to take permission from him. Koi initiative allowed nahi hai, to employees ko organization se koi belongingness nahi rahegi. Or, wo मशीन्स की तरह ही जब काम करते रहेंगे तो उनकी इनिशिएटिव पार खत्म हो जाएगी और उनमें चेंज के रिगार्ड्स में या चेंज के टुवर्ड्स एक रेजिस्टेंस आ जाएगी वो कुछ भी चेंज को एक्सेप्ट करने में अनेबल होंगे now comes the second part of classical approach that is scientific management by f w taylor as the name clears us that here everything will be based on certain principles and cause and effect relationship. Let's discuss its principles first. First one is replacement of rule of thumb that is every work should be planned properly before it is carried out. Second is mutual cooperation among all the departments. Third one is proper development of the workers for efficient and effective performance. And last two principles state that the work should be divided properly to get maximum output. For the application of these principles, these five elements are given for scientific management that is work study, standardization, functional foremanship, introduction of costing system and mental revolution among the employees to improve the working of an organization. Now comes the evaluation of scientific management. 
where I have listed various benefits and loopholes of the scientific management. Now we will talk about the last element of classical approach that is administrative management wherein the father of management Henry Fayol firstly divided the activities of business into various categories and accordingly suggested various functions of management. So the activities which are divided are technical activities, commercial activities, security activities, accounting activities and managerial activities. So, in activities ko properly operate karne ke liye, in me properly function karne ke liye, management ke five principles, principal functions hume describe kiye gaye. Those are planning, organizing, coordinating, directing and controlling. Henry Fuel gave the 14 principles of management. Let's have a look on these. First is division of work among employees. Second is parity or equality between authority and responsibility. Third is discipline. Next is unity of command, which says one boss, one command. Fifth is unity of direction which says one head, one plan only and six is subordination of individual interest to general interest. Seventh principle says adequate remuneration to the employees. Next is proper centralization. Next, the principle of scalar chain suggests to follow a hierarchy for the flow of information Principle of order, that is the next principle, says us that the right material should be at right place and the right person should be at right job. Next principle of equity says that there should be no favoritism. Next principle is of initiative. The thirteenth principle says that there should be stability and retention of personnel. And the last principle of esprit de corps says that there should be no abuse of the written communication or any of the instruction given by the top management and organizations must follow mutual cooperation. So, Bache, these principles are universal in nature and the, there should be specialization in the work. But their application should be there under the guidance of experts. Now we have come towards the end of this video lecture. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Stay home, stay safe, keep learning.